Hello, my name is Maura Sweeney and I have a confession. Although my whole senior speech was about proper pronunciation of names, I cannot pronounce Natalie's last name properly. <laughs> this is one of the most prominent things that I can remember about Natalie from middle school. I can even distinctly remember one seventh grade algebra class where everyone spent 20 minutes trying to pronounce Natalie's last name correctly, but to no avail. But Natalie is so much more than her last name. She possesses countless amazing qualities and her kindness, intelligence, and occasional unexpected sassy remark never fail to brighten my day. She is a diligent student and an incredible friend, and I know that she will impart beautiful words of wisdom upon all of us today. So please join me in listening to and welcoming the radiant Natalie Yu Ying Long. People tend to think that I never get stressed or never show any real signs of emotion. <laughs> I actually can't disagree with that statement. Although I don't consider myself to be a tough person, I have never felt compelled to express my genuine thoughts or emotions. This doesn't mean I don't laugh or smile, because I'm actually known to do just that at the worst times possible. <laughs> Instead, I rarely show sadness or anger. But I thought now might be a good time to tell you about one of my biggest journeys and all the emotions that accompanied it. When I moved from Memphis to Hong Kong in eighth grade with my mom and brother, I only told a few people because I was not even sure that this fantasy would become a reality until a few weeks prior to the move. So you could say I just disappeared from Memphis. <laughs> I will admit I was extremely upset that I would have to leave St. Mary's to live in a country that I once only knew as a tourist. I hardly spoke the language, had never dealt with public transportation, and had never faced such extreme change. To add to these negative sentiments, my dad had to stay in Memphis while my oldest brother began his first year of college in New York. This was the first time our family had been separated in so many different directions at once. Almost every night, I would have dreams or nightmares about my life in Hong Kong, and these dreams molded my expectations of my life ahead. When I actually arrived, everything was so surreal. Although I was constantly surrounded by my extended family and new friends, I refused to accept this situation as my life because it was different. However, I eventually recognized that my situation was not going to change, despite my hopes that it would. So I began to take every opportunity I had to explore my newly accepted home, including its vibrant atmosphere and unique culture. In learning to navigate the complex transportation system alone, I gained a new freedom and confidence that I had never possessed before, and I welcomed a newfound kindness that has no boundaries. At the end of the school year, I was the happiest I had been since moving there, but I soon learned that I would have to learn, return to Memphis for high school. Honestly, I didn't want to come back to Memphis or St. Mary's. <laughs> I had finally adjusted to the change, so I was far from thrilled to know that almost immediately after I had found solace in my life, I had to pack everything up and say goodbye again. Now that everyone knows that I didn't want to be here four years ago, I want to explain my thoughts in retrospect. I can promise you that I'm actually very grateful that I returned to Memphis. I have met some of the most incredible people here, and even the little blessings have changed my life for the better. I would especially like to take a moment to thank Mr. Miller because he holds a special place in many of our hearts. It's people like him that remind me to choose happiness and be grateful for everything in my life. Especially this year, I have grown more comfortable talking to people that I have pretty much never said a single word to. <laughs> and that is all thanks to the people who never lost faith in me. You have all inspired a confidence that is still growing today, which is probably extremely obvious given my sassy and sarcastic spirit now. This attitude is my way of expressing myself through love and appreciation. But don't worry if I haven't sassed you. It's probably coming. <laughs> I have not yet traveled the entire world, but I have experienced enough of it to appreciate its contribution to our daily perception of the beauty and exhilaration of life's blessings. I hope that you too will be able to have the same realization through your personal journey. 
You are part of a bigger picture and you will face changes, both great and small. So appreciate the blessings around you and be a blessing to others. Although some situ situations may be uncomfortable, they present opportunities to explore new paths filled with promise. The uncomfortable is a chance to discover your treasures and an opportunity to choose what you want to do with them. Sometimes the things you can't change have the greatest capacity to end up changing you. But it is your responsibility to recognize that the only constant force in our lives is the ability to change ourselves, not our circumstances. So make this year the one for thoughtful changes rather than new changes, and choose to follow the path towards faith, love, and compassion, not out of duty, but out of the will to surrender to your conscience. As Leo Tolstoy once said, the changes in our life must come from the impossibility to, love, to live otherwise than according to the demands of our conscience, not from our mental resolution to try a new form of life. So pack your bags and travel wherever your heart takes you. You just might find yourself on the way. Thank you.